One of the features of the landscape at Sueby is chalk. Sueby sits high on chalk cliffs overlooking the sea, and chalk buildings are a common sight in the local countryside. This chalk bedrock, which covers much of the East Riding, is up to half a kilometre thick in some places, and is quite a remarkable rock. Scientifically speaking, chalk is made up from calcium carbonate and belongs to the limestone family of sedimentary rocks. But these characterizations obscure the fact that it is made from the remains of once living creatures. The chalk was formed in the upper or late Cretaceous period, around 100 to 65 million years ago. This was a very different world to the one with which we are familiar. On land, you might find a wandering Tyrannosaurus or Triceratops, but there was less land for them to roam. Greater levels of volcanic activity caused by the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea had warmed the seas to perhaps as high as 30 degrees centigrade and pushed greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. The global levels of carbon dioxide were four times that of today. The polar ice caps melted, the sea level rose, and about half of the world's land lay underwater. This included much of England to the east of the Pennines, and the land that would become East Yorkshire was covered by a shallow, clear, tropical sea. This sea was full of life. There were primitive bony fishes, as well as ammonites, and a squid-like creature called a belemnite, and fossils of both these animals can be found on Sueby Beach. There would have been larger creatures too, such as sharks, and sea-living reptiles like turtles, crocodiles, plesiosaurs and mosasaurs. But it is the sea bed which would go on to become the chalk of the Yorkshire Wolds. This was a deep, bright white, gritty, muddy ooze. It was almost entirely composed of microscopic bony plates called coccoliths that form the shells of small, single-celled algae that float in the oceans. These microscopic life forms can still be found throughout the world's seas, and it has been estimated 5 billion of these tiny organisms live beneath each square metre of the Atlantic, and that in the warm chalk seas of the Cretaceous, the numbers might have been as high as 45 billion per square metre. This deep white ooze on the ocean floor was soft enough for creatures such as bivalves and sea urchins to burrow into, yet firm enough for others, such as sponges that anchored themselves to the sea floor, to grow. The well-preserved fossils of these sponges have led geologists to call the chalk layer between Sueby Steps and Danes Dyke the Flamborough Sponge Beds. Over time, this ooze became buried under other sediments. Geological forces subjected it to heat and to pressure that drove out the water and compacted it into rock. Changes in sea levels and rock formation pushed it up out of the sea and natural processes of erosion exposed it. Today, the landscape of Sueby is a peaceful one, far removed from the forces that created it, and visitors might well be excused for thinking that this all has very little to do with them. But the landscape of the Yorkshire Wolds, as well as its flora and fauna, are the direct product of the chalk bedrock that underlies it, and the lives and deaths of the billions of microscopic creatures that created it.